Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician, and in this short video, I want to explain to you seven reasons to never eat wheat again. Now, we've all heard of gluten and the effects that it can have on some people, but what you may not know is that wheat and all other grains contain a long list of substances that can cause negative effects to your health, both physical and mental. Now, if you're starving to death, wheat is much better than starving. But if you can do better than eating wheat or any other grain, then I highly encourage you to do so. If you know someone who does not have this information yet and they're still eating wheat or other grains as part of their daily diet, please consider sharing this video with them. You can send it in an email or a text. You can share it on your Facebook or your Instagram. You could literally change someone's life who's having all the negative effects of eating wheat or other grains and just not know that that's the cause. Here's a short list of the worst offenders contained in wheat and other grains. Alpha pyrothionine, alpha amylase trypsin inhibitor, peroxidase, thioredoxin, lipid transfer proteins, serine proteinase inhibitor, thalmatin like protein, gliadin, thiol reductase, one cis peroxiredoxin, and serine protease-like inhibitor. Now, this is the, a short list of the worst things. There are many more things in wheat and other grains that can cause disruption and inflammation and problems in your body. This is just a list that, that I wanted to stick to. Uh, you can find all of the resources I use to make this video in the show notes below, all the research. And then there are links within that research that break out each one of these substances in detail and explain what it actually does in your body negatively. Now let's talk about seven specific reasons that you should never eat wheat or really any other grain ever again. So number one, the gliadins I talked about earlier, they actually stimulate your appetite. They can block leptin, which is your satiety hormone or one of them, and they can actually have other effects in your brain that stimulate an inappropriate appetite. And we've all had that sensation after eating a big bowl of pasta or half a pizza or the whole pizza, and then you, you still have room for dessert. And that's part of the reason that you should really avoid all grains, including wheat. Gliadin-like proteins also can Im increase your levels of chronic inappropriate inflammation. This, this can have devastating effects on many of the organs and tissues in your body. Number three is that the gliadin-like proteins resemble self-antigens. Now, what's that mean? So basically, there are antigens on every single thing in the world. Your immune system should be able to tell the difference between your own antigens and not attack those. And then it should also be able to tell what is foreign antigens that might need to be attacked. The problem with these, these peptides in wheat is that they can very closely resemble the peptides on your cells. And so your body can wind up inappropriately attacking your own cells and tissues, thinking that there are foreign substances because your immune system has been confused by these peptides in wheat. The phytates contained in wheat and all grains can block absorption of essential minerals in your body and uh, electrolytes. And this can include magnesium, zinc, iron, calcium, and many other minerals that your body needs for optimal function, these peptides and grains can just block the absorption. So you, you pass them through your waste and you don't actually absorb the minerals that you need. Any of the substances on this list that I talked about can actually cause allergic reactions in your body. And for some people, this will be allergic rhinitis. For other people, it'll be a skin reaction. For many people, it'll be a gut reaction that resembles irritable bowel or ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. For some people, it can be a reaction inside their joints mimicking arthritis. Number six, many of these peptides contained in wheat and other grains can act as endocrine disruptors. And so in women, this can lead to PCOS and problems getting pregnant. In men, it can lead to gynecomastia, which is a, a fancy word for man boobs. And number seven on this list is, is in many respects the most important, not because of the amount of damage it does, but because how susceptible it makes you to an addiction 
to the processed foods that are made from wheat and other grains. Several of these peptides in this list can actually attach to the mu opiate receptors in your brain. So they can give you actually a positive feedback like morphine or like Oxycontin. Now it's not as strong as these habit forming drugs, but for many people, they're very susceptible to this and they can, uh, they can develop food addictions and eating disorders. And now do you think for one second that the big food corporations don't know about this and don't cash in on this so that they know that they've got a steady stream of income coming from you because you're addicted to their processed foods. Now this list could go on and on. I decided to stop it at seven because that's a nice number, but I want you to do your research. If you're still eating wheat and other grains in your diet, please check out the research I listed in the show notes below. Do not blindly believe that the processed food that you buy from big food manufacturers that contains these grains in a highly processed form are in any way good for you. They are not real human food. They are food-like substances that contribute to inflammation, allergic reactions, and for some people, food addiction. If you enjoyed this video, please take one second and click that subscribe button down there and also the little bell button right beside it so that every time I make a video like this, you'll get a notification and you'll be one of the very first people to know. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next video.